Good morning to you, Zahir. It's uh, fascinating uh, in terms of the process with which this takes. Uh, uh, the SCA, are they likely to uh, grant this leave to appeal? Look, we have the dismissal of the application for leave to appeal to the Constitutional Court by Bob Hewitt. Bob Hewitt was given six years direct imprisonment for a rape he perpetrated more than 40 years ago. Then we have the endorsement by the Constitutional Court of the conviction and sentence of King Dalandaibo. King Dalandaibo was sentenced to 11 years direct imprisonment despite the finding of culpable homicide having been overturned on appeal. There was no crime of murder or culpable homicide against King Dalandaibo. With Oscar Pistorius, the, it's called an application for leave to appeal to the Supreme Court of Appeals. Uh, it was referred to as a petition many, many years ago. In the application for leave to appeal, we must remember that the state is only applying for leave to appeal against the sentence. Now, to succeed in an application for leave to appeal against the sentence, the state will have to show that Judge Masipa committed a misdirection that is a far more stronger ground than one would rely on when applying for leave to appeal against a conviction. So if I analyze the palpable misdirection in the order of Judge Masipa, I begin with the cost order. Judge Masipa gave a cost order against the state despite in her inviting an application for leave to appeal. That, in my view, amounts to a misdirection. The second misdirection by Leonard Judge Masipa is my perception of her expression of annoyance at, at having been taken on appeal with the appeal court in Bloemfontein, setting her aside her conviction of culpable homicide and finding Oscar Pistorius guilty of murder. Now, the huge anomaly is, how is it possible that Judge Masipa was not persuaded to impose a higher sentence for murder than she did for culpable homicide. She imposed a sentence of five years imprisonment upon Oscar Pistorius, having found him guilty of culpable homicide. She imposes a sentence of six years imprisonment for murder. And in her judgment, she preempts an application in terms of Section 276 Big A. That means she, Judge Masipa, preempts the findings of correctional services by saying that Oscar is a candidate fit for rehabilitation. This she did despite Oscar Pistorius not testifying in mitigation of his sentence. And this was done despite evidence from correctional services revealing that Oscar was rude and he was disobedient and he did not reflect rehabilitation during his first term of imprisonment. In my respectful view, the Supreme Court of Appeals will be very, very hard pressed not to give the state leave to appeal and the Supreme Court of Appeal will itself seize itself with imposing a proper sentence. This time, the Supreme Court of Appeals will not return the case back to Judge Masipa. They will themselves impose an appropriate sentence. And unless substantial and compelling circumstances can be shown, the Supreme Court of Appeals will impose a direct term of imprisonment of 15 years. Um, if it is suggested that the substantial and compelling circumstances is the fact that he has no legs, that, that fact is not sufficient to satisfy substantial and compelling circumstances because this crime dealt with his intention, with the workings of his brain. And there is not a shred of evidence that the working of Oscar's brain when he shot four bullets in a closed door at a defenseless woman inside a bathroom was ampered with. Oscar ought to, at the very beginning, pleaded guilty and relied on crime and passionel for a lighter sentence. His failure to do so and his persistence in misleading and with respect, being untruthful to the court, are factors that are aggravating. Let's just take a step back and touch on that point about uh, returning issues uh, to the initial uh, trial court judge. It seems uh, 
uh, almost like a waste of a step in proceedings uh, when the Supreme Court of Appeal uh, referred back to sentencing. She then sentences and then they appeal and then it goes back to her again. I mean, she's given the sentence. That's what she believes uh, should be the punishment. Is it not uh, a waste of uh, a sort of court time? Why don't they just go straight to the Supreme Court of Appeal? Look, the general view is that the court that is best equipped to impose an appropriate sentence is the trial court, because the trial court has been steeped into the atmosphere of the trial. Um, this is the reasoning that the Supreme Court of Appeal was guided by in, the ref in, in substituting Oscar's conviction of culpable homicide with murder and referring the sentence back to Judge Masipa. But in my respectful view, and I agree with you entirely, this is a very artificial. The Supreme Court of Appeals was seized with the matter. They substituted the conviction from culpable homicide to murder, which is far worse. They had all the facts before them. And I, well, I say this with the greatest respect. It appears to the observer that the Supreme Court of Appeals were trying to placate Judge Masipa in that they substituted her conviction of cop with murder and now they want to appease her and referring the matter back but it's an expensive very expensive waste of state resources and uh, i am confident this time that the supreme court of appeals will themselves which they can do and which they've done in many previous cases the supreme court of appeals have all the facts before it the record will be presented to the court, the record is a type transcription of what happened in the court, our quo, and the Supreme Court of Appeals will, I respectfully submit, be forced to impose an appropriate sentence. The one feature which would develop our law enormously is that the Supreme Court of Appeals can elaborate on exactly what is substantial and compelling circumstances. This phrase haunts every criminal practitioner doing criminal law. What is substantial and compelling circumstances? Why were these guidelines which guided Judge Masipa not followed in imposing a lesser sentence on Bob Hewitt? Bob Hewitt, 70 year old man, he could easily be imposed with a prison imprisonment of 2761I or H. That means he could have served his sentence outside prison and he could have been effectively punished. King Dalan Daibo, that is most shocking and frightening which I believe is currently still wrongly in prison because he is the first person in the history of our law that has been convicted and sentenced by a court that was not properly constituted with one of the assessors having died before he was convicted. Um, as far as this crime against women are concerned, it has been aggravated by the recent gruesome murder of Lakita in Cape Town. So the Supreme Court of Appeals must take a stand and they must ensure that judgment mirrors the feelings of South Africans who, for want of a better word, are hot full of infliction of gruesome crimes upon defenseless women. One last question. I mean, I'm picking up a sense uh, that you're that you're seeing a, a harsher sentence being imposed uh, by the SCA. But let's look at, at the uh, mitigating circumstances. Each case is obviously different. Uh, you look at, uh, you know, Bob Hewitt uh, and Dylan Lebo, very different cases in many respects. Uh, but there are a, a lot of uh, mitigating circumstances for Oscar Pistorius. Uh, uh, some of them, obviously, he's a double amputee. Uh, many people say that he suffers from uh, a number of anxiety disorders. I mean, uh, those surely will be taken into account uh, by the SEA. But this is on paper. They were not in the court. They didn't see, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the harshness with which, uh, you know, uh, he was on his stumps, uh, all, of that, all of that kind of evidence that was given to that. Uh, the SEA, are they likely to uh, uh, buy into this? Look, every accused person facing a charge of murder or rape, I, with respect, have done criminal work for the past 15 years. There is no accused person facing a serious criminal charge who does not affect, who is not impacted by anxiety or depression. The aggravating features in Oscar Pistorius' case far outweigh any mitigating features, and these inter alia are the following. 
the failure of Oscar Pistorius to take Judge Masipa into his confidence, the failure of Oscar Pistorius going into the box and testifying in mitigation of his sentence, then Oscar Pistorius' fairy tale story, the fairy tale story that he believed that there was an intruder inside the bathroom, and that is why he shot. That is a fairy tale out of Mills and Boons. It is incredible. And what further aggravates Oscar Pistorius, Oscar Pistorius is telling the whole world, if there is an intruder in my bathroom, nine out of ten, he's a black person, and if he's in my bathroom, no matter how defenseless he may be, I am entitled to shoot him dead. That is a perpetuation of a racist philosophy that hopefully came to an end in 1994. That is not the truth. You will remember 15, 20 years ago, I did several of these cases where whites shot children and blacks and often the defense was, we thought they were monkeys. The defense of Oscar Pistorius and his advocate is a perpetuation of a lie that was started in the old South Africa and is now being perpetuated amongst, with respect, the white themselves. How can you tell the world and persist and say, I believe that there was an intruder in the bathroom? Riva Stinkham was next to the bed. All he could do is say, Riva, where are you? After shooting one bullet, why did he shoot four bullets? His intention clearly was to terminate the life of a defenseless woman who was in a bathroom concealed in a wooden door. These are very aggravating features and... Consequently, I respectfully say, the aggravating factors far outweigh the mitigating factors. Then as far as Advocate Barry Rue is concerned, they were very quick to strike Advocate Jiba and Advocate Amrebi off the advocate's role. How wrong or how right is it, I say with respect, for a counsel to persist in presenting a defence well knowing that this defence is untrue? Is that not wrong? How wrong is Advocate Jiba and Advocate Mrebi's conduct from the conduct of many advocates who daily go to court presenting cases knowing that the case is wrong in law and often on fact? That is why I say with respect, Advocate Jiba and Advocate Mrebi are victims of a gentrification. If they did wrong, the appropriate sanction ought not to have been the striking off. Striking off is tantamount or worse than a long term of imprisonment. It will destroy the entire career. The case of Oscar Pistorius will open many answers to many questions which the Supreme Court of Appeals can give clarity on. Great, Zahir. It's always good chatting to you. Thanks so much for your insight this morning. Live there from Johannesburg, Zahir Omar. Well, just